Hey everybody, I'm just going to quickly go over strategy, a timing strategy which was sent to me by a reader. His timing strategy uses Cornish Fisher expansion. Um, so basically what it does is it takes the probability found by assuming that the S&P 500 is normal, probability of occurring a loss, incurring a loss, and then it does the same with the Cornish Fisher expansion, which doesn't make any such uh, assumptions of normality, compares both of them. And if the Cornish Fisher expansion pro probability is about 15% or 10% higher than um, the normal probability, then basically the strategy sells everything and um, goes 100% into cash. And it, it's similar to the skew strategy that I've been um, beating to death over the last week or two. It basically tries to identify periods where fat tails occur, fat left tails, and then jumps out of the market. So I'm just going to give you an overview of the spreadsheet, which uh, the reader sent to me, and then give you an overview of the code um, that I use to... Um, approximate the strategy in the backtest IDE. So here on the left side we see we have um, S&P 500 daily closes. Oh, monthly closes actually. That's interesting. So monthly closes since 1927, 1928. Um, monthly returns then, column E. Or column, yeah, column D is the monthly returns. And then up top we have all the column headers. So for the Cornish Fisher expansion, we need to calculate the mean, standard deviation, skew, and kurtosis. Obviously, for the normal uh, probability calculation, we only need to calculate the uh, using the mean and the standard deviation. And so modified column K here will be the column that calculates the Cornish Fisher expansion. Um, what other things do we have here? Look back, so how much of a history do we take when we're calculating these things? Um, threshold, threshold, I can't quite remember what that is. I think that is, ah, I think the threshold is whether when the return is below zero, that's the probability we're calculating. So I'm just, I think that's the one. Uh, can't quite see it here, but I think that's it. So if the threshold is positive, then we'd be, say for example, 10%, then the probability we'd be calculating would be below plus 10%, if the threshold is negative, we'd be calculating the probability that the next return is less than 10%. Um, other things, so the level is the proportional difference between the Cornish-Fisher um, approach to calculating the probability of a loss and the normal distribution approach. And, um, and here are the, the, the returns, the Kager, and all that good stuff, all right? So, so let me just scroll down a little bit. Now we see, so here are the calculations for the mean, standard deviation, skew, kurtosis, probability less than zero here. Ah, here we go, J2. Yeah, that's the threshold. <coughs> um, okay, it's getting a little bit more complicated here. So the Cornish-Fisher um, expansion is not for the faint-hearted, only for those Excel masters amongst you. Um, there we go, chock full of formulae. That. <clears throat> so here we can see the the crux is 
the ratio here. So generally it looks like it's below one, below one. Uh, let's have a look at a situation when it's uh, greater. Let me have a look here. Ah, here we go. Let's scroll down. So the 30s, the golden 30s, nothing much happening. 29 happened already. Uh, increasing though, this is babies increasing. And finally come the 40s, America enters the war. And things can go really, really bad. And that's where we sell out and we're 100% cash. Let's have a look down here. So 40s again, America wins the war. <clears throat> see if we find any other instances of selling out. Uh, selling out, what's the word for it? Cashing out maybe, selling out. Okay, let's have a look. It's increasing again. Come on, let's try to scroll. Uh, all right, I don't think it's pretty high here, 95. Ah, here we go, 2008 cashes out again, big time. All right, okay, so you got the idea, cashing out um, when trouble occurs, when Cornish Fisher basically detects fat tails. So this is the spreadsheet, pretty complicated. Let's have a look at the code quickly, um, just to show you what the equivalent is. So here in the code, we set up the threshold, the level, dummy returns. So as the comment says, I just added this in here. I don't actually use it just to make sure that we have at least 51 returns or 51 prices to generate 51 returns. Um, all right, so the returns are actually all available. So this grabs all available returns line seven. Then we calculate the mean, we cal calculate the sample standard deviation, skew kurtosis, probability below, um, so probability below zero, that's the threshold here. Um, then just the inverse of the expression above. Um, so this is the modified probability with the Cornish expansion. So, as you can see, it's pretty heavy going with the um, formula. Um, so that's there. And then the logic, we have the ratio um, down here below, the ratio between normal and modified. And then it's basically, if it's the ratios above the level, sell, else be long all the time. So... Um, Oh, so I got to add the S&P 500. So the difference here is, is that my data only goes back to 1950. Although I'm sure I can get monthly data going back um, to 28 as well. That might be worth looking into. So waiting for the market data to download you see uh, oh hold on it should be Yahoo let me add that again. Actually, let me do a quick, it's coming. All right, it's there. So let's hit back test. Oh, 
and there you have the return so uh, not a bad sharp at all so obviously um, we're, we're estimating using historical statistics we're not um, using implied statistics not forward looking but backward looking that might be a little improvement that I could could insert for next run but um but the main point is is that in a couple of lines of code you have something clear um, you can work with you can change easily versus a large intimidating spreadsheet with thousands of formulas that you just hope uh, works out okay so thanks to the reader to set for sending in the strategy and uh, thanks for watching.